Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist here at Tech Travel Geeks. And today we're continuing our smartphone comparison videos with a side-by-side -side comparison between the Nokia 1.4 smartphone and the Nokia 2.4 smartphone. If you don't already, please do subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. Right then, so we have these two smartphones from Nokia. There are a few months between the release of the two, around about four or five months. And there are two different series. The Nokia 1.4 is the fourth generation of the 1 series. And the Nokia 2.4 is the fourth generation of the 2 series. Technically, the Nokia 2 series is a step up from the Nokia 1 series, but on the surface, the two look very similar, uh, especially in this fourth generation of the se the both series. So, let's look at the two devices from the front first. So, looking at them side by side, they're very similar. The Both smartphones have teardrop notches at the top of the screen, both smartphones have relatively large screens, and in this case we're talking about 6.5 inch. Now technically the Nokia 1.4 is just marginally bigger, it's 6.52 inches, but it's a negligible difference. And in terms of screen resolution, they're both HD ready or 720 screens. So both devices have 720 tick pixels by 1600. Now, for most people, that's going to be more than enough for typing, messages, social media, photography, with the basic cameras both smartphones have, and more importantly, consuming media, whether that's video, music, and other, other uh, forms of multimedia. The key thing here is that both devices have big screens, which are great for media consumption, and the devices are slightly different in size as well, the Nokia 1.4 is just marginally bigger. One of the other key things we have here is the fact that the Nokia 1.4 is slightly more basic. It has a 4000 mAh battery and the Nokia 2.4 has a 4500 mAh battery. Don't let that number uh, fool you. Both devices in moderate use can last well over two days of moderate use. This is because they're both using relatively basic chipsets on the inside and those screens, though large, are actually lower resolution, therefore there's less computing power required to run them. Now, I mentioned that there's two different chipsets here. The Nokia 1.4 is using a Snapdragon 215 chipset, whereas the Nokia 2.4 is using a MediaTek chipset the Helio P22 in this case. The key difference here is that the Nokia 2.0, the Nokia 1.4, apologies, has four hamsters, or it's a quad-core processor. So it's like having four uh, basic hamsters, running wheels, running the whole system. Whereas the MediaTek Helio P22 is an octa-core processor, that means it has eight hamsters on wheels running the show. So key difference there, quad-core, octa-core, and the fact that the Snapdragon 215 is pretty dated in its technology. It's a pretty dated chipset. It's a 28 nanometer one, whereas the Helio P22 is a 12 nanometer chipset. Significant difference in efficiencies here. So, as I said, in base day-to-day -day use, they're very similar but the difference is in the software experience and more importantly how responsive and fast it can be because of those different chipsets that we see in the devices. Now both devices have handily placed ergonomically easy to find uh, fingerprint scanners at the back which work great. I really do like having fingerprint scanners in that position and to have them on two devices that are priced under £100 is a really really good thing. So well done to Nokia in managing to get that into the overall package. Now, when we're talking about software experience, uh, there's two very different uh, ones here. On the surface, they look similar, but in fact, the 
Nokia 1.4 is running, uh, where is it, Android 10 Go Edition, whereas the Nokia 2.4 is running Android 11 in the Android 1 Edition. So two very different operating systems, the Nokia 2.4 updated in May to Android 11. It has, this, they both devices have the same amount of RAM, but in terms of software updates, but also in terms of security patches, there is quite a difference. Now, we're recording this video at the beginning of July. Having a 5th of June 2021 patch on the Nokia 2.4, as you can see here, is uh, perfectly acceptable. Whereas having a patch from the 5th of February on the Nokia 1.4 is very questionable. These are two devices that Nokia advertise as being get, being ready for and to be receiving the latest security updates and Android updates. We don't always see that delivered. And especially for the Nokia 2.4, it's worth calling out that the device was launched in September. Uh, we got our device in October 2020. It took until May to get the Android 11 release that was released in September 2020. So um, it's not a great thing to see Android updates take more than six months to reach devices. It really is a, a bit of a, a worry in the fact that Nokia are not really delivering their promises in terms of updates. Now, Android Go on the and Nokia 1.4 and Android One on the Nokia 2.4 are slightly different experiences as in they tend to have different features and different apps available to them. Both these devices, as we purchase them under £100, have two gigabytes of RAM, but Android Go is optimized for devices with less memory. And you can see that in the fact that the Google launcher or the Google uh, app has a lot of web apps here. You rely on the web more than native apps, just because of the limited processing power and often the limited memory. Whereas uh, the Nokia 2.4 is running Android One, it has a more powerful chipset, it can handle native applications better, therefore it gives you the full fat experience. Uh, in terms of Android Go apps, you have the Android Go Assistant as opposed to the Google Assistant. You have the Gallery Go app rather than the full-on uh, Photos app, though you can install that if you wish to. So there's a few cut-down apps optimized for less powerful devices. So one thing to really think of here is how are you going to be using your smartphone? What are your day-to-day -day uses? Is Android Go going to really satisfy your needs here? So we've covered the experience, the basic hardware. Uh, one thing calling, worth calling out is both devices have dedicated Google Assistant buttons on the side. Uh, both devices have power and volume rockers on the right-hand side of the device. And both devices have courage ports at the top of the device. Now this is really important because both devices also have FM radios. You'll need to use wired headphones to be able to use that FM radio. But if you wish to use, uh, if you wish to go ahead and use uh, Bluetooth, you can do so. Just be aware of the fact that the Nokia 1.4, the Android Go Edition uh, one series device is on Bluetooth 4, whereas the Nokia 2.4 is actually on Bluetooth 5. So a key difference here, you can potentially connect this to multiple devices. And in terms of, of uh, connectivity for sat-nav and positioning. The Nokia 2.4 has a few more services behind it, where as far as we see from Nokia, the Nokia 1.4 only has assisted GPS, so one of many systems, whereas the Nokia 2.4 has three. So it has AGPS, GLONASS, and BDS, which should give you decent global coverage. Now, Another key thing is here, both of these devices are micro USB ones. You have charging and data transfers via micro USB. 
In 2020, that's not great. When the world is moving to standardizing USB Type-C, this may be an issue going forward. You may not be able to get chargers or accessories as frequently as uh, USB Type-C. But for most people, that's not really an issue. So let's talk about cameras. Both devices have two cameras on the back. There are two different industrial designs here. The Nokia 1.4 has that round center bit for the camera. And in this case, that camera circle has an eight megapixel standard autofocus camera and a two megapixel macro sticker camera. It's basic, it does the job. It's pretty horrible in low light. If you're trying to catch something moving quickly like a cat or a dog or a child, it can be very blurry. The Nokia 2.4 definitely has a better camera. It is more responsive, it handles things better. It's still not great, but for the price, for under £100, there's nothing to complain about. The main sensor here is a 13 megapixel one, and there's that 2 megapixel depth sensor, which is uh, questionable if it's of any use. On the front, in that teardrop notch we saw earlier, uh, you have two, two selfie cameras. Both of them, in this case, are five megapixel ones. Uh, don't expect great pictures, again, in low light and fast or fast moving things, but basic one that does do a decent job in good light. So, um, in terms of overall performance, in my experience, there is night and day. The Nokia 1.4 is very basic. It's an improvement of the, over the Nokia 1.3. Whereas the Nokia 2.4 is definitely a more pleasant experience and more of the full fat Android experience with very few issues in my, in my opinion. Now, Android 11 really improved things. Uh, it has changed the experience up for the Nokia 2.4. One thing I would say is if you haven't already, check out the video we published recently in the comparison between the Nokia 1.4 and the Nokia 1.3 is noticeable how much of a jump of experience and just generally how much smartphone you get for the same price in around about a year. It's been quite a big jump, but it's worth it bearing in mind. This is the entry level Nokia. It's a one series smartphone, which means that it's just the basics. Whereas with the Nokia 2.4, you do get a much better experience. Having said all these things, uh, what I'll do is leave links in the description to other videos that reference these two devices. I'll also leave links to where you can purchase these on Amazon. The current pricing is very similar, around about between 80 and 100 pounds, depending on which color, and more importantly, which storage and memory options you go for. But between the two, if you have around about 100 pounds to spend on a smartphone, I would definitely go with the Nokia 2.4. For the price, you get a lot more smartphone, a much better experience. And one little thing, if you're not going to be using a case, I really like this gradient back. It may be difficult to tell, but in this case, the charcoal colored uh, Nokia 2.4 has a gradient that goes from a darker gray to a lighter gray at the top. And as I said, value for money, it's great. One last thing, when I did mention that you can buy the two phones, the prices vary depending on the amount of memory and storage you get. Both devices are expandable with micro SD cards, so you can pop in an extra 64 or 128 gigabyte card and they work great. It's really good for media. So just bear that in mind. Right then, I think we can wrap this up. You'll have the links in the description for more, more information and where to purchase the devices. If you would like to know more, feel free to leave us a comment in the section below. And if you would like to see more videos from the Tech Travel Geeks, where we cover consumer electronics, which we believe make the travel experience better, please do subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks and have that notification bell turned on. But for now, thanks for watching and goodbye from me.